So there's a new addition to the cabinet collection. So I went to a party last night, and uh, it just so happened to not be too far away from the Guitar Center. And uh, I always take the chance to go to Guitar Center whenever I can, uh, no matter if I intend to buy anything or not. Maybe I'll come across something interesting. The, the lure of the Guitar Center always draws me in. And uh, it just so happened that I did see some interesting stuff when I was in there. I saw a person attempting to play the main bass melody for Tool's Schism on melodic percussion on an electronic drum set. I saw a Mesa single rectifier going for $1,000, an amp from the ultimate family of scumbag amplifiers. I played through it a little bit, gave me good scumbag tone, made me feel like a scumbag, made me feel like drinking Pepsi or... Uh, Monster Energy drinks and uh, listening to Nickelback. But the most interesting thing I saw was a certain guitar cabinet. Holy crap, 99 bucks. A 4x12 guitar cabinet going for $100. Obviously, I'm not expecting anything quality, but still, like, guitar cabinets, good guitar cabinets can easily cost 10 times that much. So, even if it sucks, then it's comparatively hardly any money wasted, right? So even though I left the Guitar Center empty-handed that night, there was still this bug in the back of my mind that that cabinet had planted there. So I left the Guitar Center, I went to the party, uh, a guy showed up who brought a, a Line 6 Spider amplifier with him, uh, which is an amplifier that I've always wanted to play through, but I unfortunately was not able to do that that night. Uh, but I did take a picture of the speaker that was in it, so maybe at some point I can seek that speaker out and put it in one of my own cabinets and uh, maybe get a little bit closer to that sweet, sweet Line 6 Spider tone that we all know and love so well. I ended up staying the night at the party, and in the morning, uh, I went back to the Guitar Center, and, well, you probably already guessed, I got the cabinet. What, what even is this thing? Like, I, I know that Crate was, like, a maker of cheap-ass solid-state amplification in the 90s. Maybe they still exist today, I don't know. But I'm guessing that this was really cheap when it was new as well. And it was like, you know, baby's first 4x12 guitar cab. I don't know. It's definitely from back in the days, you know, when... Uh, it wasn't as widely understood as it is now, thanks to the internet, that the guitar cabinet is probably the biggest factor in determining the frequency character of your guitar sound. So people just plugged into whatever 4x12 they could find, and uh, this was probably one of them. So, who knows? Maybe the glorious sounds of 90s death metal will come roaring out of this thing, or it will just sound like bees in a paper bag. I don't even know what this thing is. I think it's it said like G12, G412 SA or something on, on the Guitar Center tag, which is like G412 is like the most generic name for a guitar cabinet you could ever come up with. It's definitely seen better days too. Like it's got... It's got a bunch of dirt, like bizarre reddish dirt in it, like it was dragged through a pile of red clay dust or something. I mean, again, I'm not expecting quality. And the name isn't everything. Um, I mean, what about the speakers? Uh, I opened up the back uh, because the cabinet does not say its impedance or power rating anywhere on it. So I opened up the cabinet to try to get an idea of what that might be by looking at the speakers. I don't even remember what kind of speakers were in there. Suffice to say, they were not name brand, and they were all 8 ohms. So I'm going to hazard a guess that the cabinet is 8 ohms. Who knows? I mean, Crate manufactured solid state stuff, so impedance matching wasn't important. I either don't know what the power rating is, or I can't remember what it said on the speakers. But fear not, I'm not going to be playing this thing at a loud enough volume for the power rating to be approached whatever it is. I'm sure of it. So it's a $100 guitar cabinet. Very exciting. Either it's going to be an absolute steal, a hidden gem, or I'm just going to have gotten what I paid for and it's going to be a complete pile of smelly dog shit. So let's find that out now. Now, of course, we need a reference point. Um, we need an actual industry standard cabinet that we know is good and sounds good to compare it to. That's going to be the Mesa 4x12 right here. So I'm going to do a uh, rather unscientific comparison. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna keep as much the same as possible. Um, I'm just going to throw a microphone up in front of the crate thing, throw the same microphone up in front, of the, in front of the Mesa cabinet, and see what I got my hands on. So let's do that right now.
Yep, I got what I paid for, all right. This thing sounds absolutely horrible. It is not a hidden gem at all. Good lord. I, I, th I think I have a new candidate for the worst sounding guitar speakers in my collection. The high end on this thing is just unbearably fizzy and harsh, and the mid-range has all the impact of a wet noodle, and the bass frequencies sound like they're being sucked away. That's as best as I can describe it. Like on the palm mutes, it literally sounds like the bass is being sucked away instead of jumping out and hitting you in the face. So this cabinet is not good. The speakers in it are not good. But you know my philosophy, it still has to have its purpose. So because I like inflicting pain on myself, now we enter the experimentation stage of the tone chase, where I vary my setup and make some more recordings and do a full mix uh, with both the crate thing and the Mesa thing. So let's see how that goes, shall we? <laughs> Let's take a look at the live set and uh, I'll walk you through what I've been doing. As always, I'll get the non-guitar stuff out of the way real quick. Uh, we've got slate drums for the drums as always. Mostly processed with live stock plugins again, as always. The bass is my bass group for live that I always use with a little bit of uh, information taken out right here that I don't usually take out just to make it not be so congested down there. I went for a less present dis and distorted uh, and low frequency heavy sound this time around. Uh, because I wanted the guitars to have as much of a spotlight as possible. So the bass is a bit reined back in this mix compared to what I usually do. But you know, it's still something that would cut pretty well and does cut pretty well. And now here is the main thing that we're focusing on, the guitars. <laughs> They sound conventionally good. The nastiness and disgustingness of the crate is really nowhere to be found. And uh, let me walk you through why that is and how I got it to be that way. So uh, first thing, you'll notice that the crate pair of tracks right here, I've got a Mesa group and a crate group. I recorded these tracks simultaneously. I had the crate and the Mesa cabinet hooked up to my amp at the same time, and I was recording them as a full stack. 57 on the Mesa, my crappy sure kick drum microphone on the crate, backed off to a distance of about a foot. Um, this gave me a very different tonal character already from the one that I got with just the solo Sure 58 that I did in the initial recording. Already this sounds way better than that, but you know, it's still pretty cheap sounding. It's worth noting that I do have some EQ going on, very simple EQ going on for the entire group. I've got a Simple low and high pass, nothing special at all. Also a bit of a stereo width adjustment here because I always do that. I don't I don't like hard panned left and right guitars. I like some information to be coming at you from in front as well, which is why I have the crate pair only panned partially left and right. But this is what it sounds like. This is what the crate sounds like without EQ. <laughs> So 
So yeah, it's taking out a lot of fizz, taking out some low-end rumble. Here's what the Mesa pair sounds like in isolation. <laughs> That's a sound that we all know. It's the generic modern metal guitar tone setup. It works, it always has worked, and it sounds conventionally good. But uh, the interesting thing happens when you combine the crate with the Mesa, and I'll tell you what that is. Um, listen for where the high bump is on the Mesa tracks compared to the crate tracks. The crate sounds more like hollow and whooshing. That's as best as I can describe it, really. Um, and when you combine those two, the, the high peaks of these two tones add together in a way that ends up being tastefully bright, as I like to call it. Like, there's a lot of information going on up there, but it's, it's pretty smooth. Nothing jumps out offensively. And because there's a lot of information up there, it sounds real aggressive. <laughs> You know, you get some extra low-end information because of the crates being recorded with a kick drum microphone. But uh, other than that, all you get really is some extra high-end additions, and the mid-range of the Mesa is largely left untouched because the crate has not much at all going on in the mid-range. So what we have now is a conventionally good sounding guitar tone with a little bit of extra dirt and bite added from a much cheaper piece of musical equipment. But there's another pair of tracks that I haven't told you about yet. And that's a pair of tracks that I got the idea of to make when I was mixing the original pair that I recorded. So I was thinking, all right, Mesa cabinet combined with cheap ass crate cabinet. That's great and all right. This is a good tone, but it's not all crate. We're bringing in some outside help in the form of the Mesa cabinet, and that's doing a lot of heavy lifting. You can combine it with just about anything, and I imagine it would make it sound much better, because that's mostly what you would be hearing. So I wanted something that was all crate cabinet. Um, all crate cabinet, but still usable. But there's one problem with that. No mids, which is going to be really difficult to make it cut. Even if I was to take out the low end rumble, take out the fizz, I would still need information in the mid range. So what's the way to add a ridiculous amount of mids to even something without much? Boss HM2. So I hooked up the HM2 and I recorded another pair of guitar tracks. <laughs> So now we bring in the HM2, and all of a sudden we have even more filth, and now also mid-range that will actually cut. <laughs> sounds absolutely filthy and absolutely massive. 
the pair of non-HM2 tracks I just duplicated from my initial recording. And I mixed them a little bit louder than the HM2 pair because I wanted the articulation of the notes present in the non-HM2 pair to still be audible because, you know, the HM2 is just dynamically flat. It's kind of hard to tell at some points what the palm mutes are and what the open strums are. So I brought the non-HM2 pair up a little bit to uh, bring some of that articulation back. I gave the non-HM2 pair also a little bit less width in the stereo field. So now you have the articulation of the non-HM2 pair kind of jumping out at you from the front and the dirt of the HM2 is more off to the sides. Of course, I still have the EQ going. <laughs> With or without EQ, it's an absolutely filthy guitar sound. And I think with this combination, with the non-HM2 pair and the HM2 pair, I have found this cabinet's purpose. It's not a throw a microphone up in front of it and you're done type piece of gear. This is something that you would use purely for character. And you know, this isn't exactly a conventionally good sound. <laughs> There are some people that might still consider it harsh, especially without EQ, they would probably call it really harsh and woofy sounding in the low frequencies. But not being exactly, well, quote unquote, mix ready is the price that you have to pay for having a guitar tone with character. <laughs> It works. It can clearly be heard. It's full of character. It's not just an average HM2 Swedish chainsaw sound. And it's using a way below average piece of equipment as a major part in the signal chain. All in all, I think this experiment has been pretty successful. I've found a purpose for this crate hunk of junk. Can, can I say crate of junk? D does that work? This concludes my video about the crate cabinet. Um, Make sure to like the video and share it around and tell me what you think in the comments. If you really like what you see, subscribe and please make sure to actually watch my videos if you do subscribe because YouTube really likes to fuck over my impressions after about three days. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Um, every time I figure out something cool having to do with recording or guitars or guitar speakers, guitar tones in general, then I'll probably make a video on it if I think that it's interesting enough to have its own video. Till next time, everybody, Diamond out.